So now that we're signed into our Chrome box, let's just kind of review Chrome OS and using it with the viewboard. I know it seems a little weird. Most of us are used to our little laptops and now we have this really big uh, Chromebook essentially. And so let's talk and just orient ourselves. First, at the very bottom, you're gonna see this black taskbar. This is actually called the shelf. It's kind of like the start menu on Windows. And the way that I access apps such as Chrome, you'll see the Chrome icon there, is you just touch it. And so what I'm doing is I'm using my hand as the mouse, right? And so just, instead of clicking, right, I just touch. So if I need to open a new tab, I can touch the plus button and that's gonna open a new tab. Now remember, uh, from earlier, I had you add the on-screen keyboard uh, when we signed in. Just as a reminder, if you need to add the on-screen keyboard, go find the clock and then go to accessibility and then scroll down and you'll see on-screen keyboard is selected and then you can see the keyboard icon in the bottom right corner. If you don't see the accessibility icon in your menu, it might be because this is minimized and so sometimes the menu looks like this. Just touch that up arrow and then it will expand the menu all the way. If you still don't see accessibility, go find that settings button there. It looks like a cogwheel. And then on this page, go to the hamburger menu. This kind of opens up the advanced settings for Chrome OS. And then what we're gonna wanna do is go to advanced and scroll down and there you'll find accessibility which then will allow you to turn on the on-screen keyboard. Why I want the on-screen keyboard is that even if I have a physical keyboard to type with, sometimes it's just easier to type at the board. So again, remember my hand is the mouse, so when I touch, right, that's like clicking. Now you'll see the keyboard pops up here and it's really wide, it goes across the whole screen. It's kind of hard to type on, almost like you're doing a dance. So what I wanna do is I wanna take it from what's called docked mode and we're gonna put it in floating mode. And the way that you do that is right between the numbers six and seven, you're gonna see a rectangle icon. When you touch that, what it does is it takes the keyboard and turns it into floating mode. Now, if you wanna move the keyboard, just grab the crosshairs at the bottom and you can touch and move the keyboard around. The cool thing about this is that anytime you wanna access the keyboard again, it's gonna to return to the position that you left it in. So if I need to type now, all I need to do is touch on my bar and then type the website that I wanna to go to. I'm gonna take you to a website called FET. This is a great uh, math and science simulation website. There are other websites that you can explore, but let's search for a specific activity. So I'm gonna to go to the magnifying glass here and um, I wanna to go to what's called area activity. So again, when I touch, notice how the on-screen keyboard automatically popped back up and it remembered my position. If you ever wanna hide it, just touch the keyboard button there in the bottom right corner and that'll hide the keyboard. Let's choose Area Builder. It's gonna take me to this activity here. And what I wanna show you in this activity is that if we wanna click and drag, it's a touch and drag. So if I was asking students to build an area, say a four, instead of using a mouse to click and drag, right now we're using touch. So I can touch and drag my four tiles. Now, something that's cool about using the viewboard with your Chromebox is that it actually has a technology called multi-touch enabled. And what multi-touch does is it essentially lets us use uh, multiple mice or mouses together, right, like on the board at once, because normally on a computer, right, there's one trackpad and only one student can use it. But if we take this activity and put it in two player mode, now I can essentially have two students at the same time. So if they wanna build uh, an area of four in different ways. I can have one student doing it on the left and one student doing it on the right. And you'll notice that they don't interfere with one another. Again, it's like giving kids uh, each their own trackpad to use, but they're just using their hands. Now, FET is a multi-touch website. It supports that technology. Not all websites support this, so you kind of do have to play around with them some, like code.org, for example, does not support multi-touch. You can still click and drag and do it. It's just not two people at a time. All right, so that's how you open a website, type, using your hand as touch a little bit. Let's talk a little bit more about Chrome OS and how it's working with the viewboard. So as I mentioned before, on the bottom, this is your shelf, okay? If you need to swipe up on the shelf, 
this will show you other apps. <laughs> this motion here of swiping up on the shelf to reveal all the different apps on your Chromebook is a little confusing. So if this is hard for you, you can also touch the circle in the bottom left corner that gives you a small preview. And then if you touch that up arrow, that will then go up and show all your apps. If you have multiple pages of apps, you just swipe like this, and that will let you swipe through to your different programs. And if I wanna hide the shelf, then I swipe all the way down. Now, the final thing I'm gonna show you on this is how to check your audio. So remember your clock is in the bottom right corner. If I touch that, you'll see here that this controls the volume on the Chrome box. But remember the board has its own speakers as well. So if you wanna make sure you're getting max volume, my recommendation is using the volume buttons on the board itself, the physical volume buttons, touch it and make sure the volume is turned up to 100% like you can see here. A quick way to change the volume is you'll see that slider appears for a couple seconds when you press the physical buttons. You can actually grab that slider and move it to control the volume a little more quickly instead of just clicking, clicking, clicking on those buttons over and over and over again. So once I know that the board speakers are turned all the way up, then I can control the volume on my Chrome box itself. So remember, both of those have to be turned up in order for you to hear volume. The easiest way to control it is just from the Chrome settings itself. So here's what I want you to do. Go ahead, make sure you sign into your Chrome box. Uh, make sure that you're practicing using touch. Go to a website, open your shelf, see if you can find other apps, but definitely get that on-screen keyboard added so it's easier for you to type when you physically don't have your keyboard.